Welcome back to Educator.com and AP Statistics. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the t-distribution. So today we're going to talk about when we'll use the t-distribution versus the z-distribution, which we've been using from here on, or which we've been using before this. We're going to talk about what the t-distribution is, then we're going to do a confidence interval example, a hypothesis test example, and then I'll also introduce a match pairs t-test. So let's get started. So when do we use the t-distribution? So the t-distribution is going to be very similar to the z or the normal distribution that we've been using thus far, except when you're doing a test or a, high, or a confidence interval for the mean, so if we're doing something for the mean, and we do not know sigma. So we do not know the population standard deviation. So if you're reading through and you only have the standard deviation from your sample, then you're going to use a t. So sometimes this is hard to tell because they'll say, here's the mean, here's the standard deviation. But in AP statistics, unless they explicitly say this is sigma or this is the standard deviation from the whole population, you can assume that you only know S, which is the sample standard deviation. And this is also sometimes just written as S of X. So if you have that, you're going to go ahead and use the T distribution. So let's talk some more about the t-distribution. What is it? So you see this curve here, right? That's just the normal distribution. We've been using that so far. And we did briefly touch on the t-distribution in our confidence interval lesson, but here we're really going to talk about it in more detail. So notice that the t-distribution looks a lot like the z-distribution, but that there's more than one. And there's, in fact, pretty much infinitely many t-distributions. But the bigger your sample size, the closer the t-distribution gets to the actual, to the normal distribution. So here, when we have a sample size of 2, you know, it's a little wider, a little lower. It's going to be different than normal distribution. But the bigger our sample size gets, the closer it gets to a normal distribution. And for that reason, some professors, some teachers will say, if n is large enough, even if we don't know the population standard deviation, we can go ahead and use the z-distribution. But I wouldn't do that. If you don't know the population standard deviation, just use the t-distribution. And yeah, at some point it's going to be mathematically the same, but the t-distribution would be the most accurate. 